I'm heading to work and today it's gonna be back to basics. So someone left a comment saying they had been through tracking school and right now they have their, their CDL. They had been given an opportunity to work for a company just like fresh out of school. But they were worried because they didn't know how to do the basic things. And that's because there's a difference between tracking school and then training. As a matter of fact, it reminded me of a guy um, at the last company I was working at in California. This guy was working for an agency, so he came on and, uh, you know, like we took him through the driving test. He passed the driving test. And then uh, the day for him to start his uh, work came. He, he, he came to work, started his work. The customer he went to, you needed to slide your tandems to the back. So the customer tells, uh, tells him, oh, we need you to move your tires to the back. And the guy had no idea how to do it. He had to call the office to ask uh, the dispatchers, how do I move my tires to the back? Because he had gone through tracking school to get his CDL, but he hadn't been through track training. There is a difference between just going to tracking school to get your CDL and then going through training. It's through training where you learn those other skills that you need. The tracking school is just for you to get your CDL. So that is something that um, I think some of us forget. Those of us that are already in tracking, we forget that. But today I'm going to try, as we go through the day, try and hit on a few basic things that you need to know. The very first thing we need to do is to hook to our trailer. What we want is we are going to line up our uh, our tractor with our trailer. But all the, the idea is to get this fifth wheel to go underneath. We are gonna get this hole to go underneath our tractor. This is the, I mean our trailer. And we want it to come and hook to that. When it gets in, into there, it's gonna lock. So I don't know if you can see that thing right there. When we get into there, it's going to push this inside and it's going to cause that to lock. And when that locks, you see how this is out? It means uh, that thing is, is out. When we push it in, it's going to lock and this, the arm right here, is going to go inside. This will indicate to us that it has locked. We will do what we call a tag. So the first thing you want to do is to align to align your your tractor with your trailer so you see how like sometimes when you when you have to look at the tires you look in your mirrors look at the tires and then you align it because again we are getting that fifth wheel to go in there and hook so I'm gonna go slowly as slowly as possible don't be in a hurry just take it slow now it has hooked. I'm gonna do what they call a tag. What that means is with, uh, I'm gonna try and move my trailer away. Uh, so I'm gonna put it moving forward. This is an automatic. If you're in a stick shift, you're gonna put it in maybe like uh, the first gear and try to move forward. You see, I'm trying to move forward, but it's not going anywhere. That indicates to me that it's locked in. Now what I need to do, is to go down here and look at my arm. As you can see, my arm is pushed in, meaning it has locked. You go down here and you can visually see. If you look in there, I don't know if you guys can see. In there, it is locked in. Construction, construction. I'm waiting to see how this place will look like. I'm thinking it will look really cool. So, I'm passing by the pilot here to get uh, some reefer fuel. Right now, my reefer fuel is at half tank. 
technically speaking I shouldn't have to fill it up because this is going to be a live unload whenever we are dropping uh, a refer unit uh, they usually want the fuel level to be three three quarters or more but for lives half half a tank should be fine the only reason I'm gonna fill it up is because the refer team guys asked me to so that's what I'm gonna do fill it up and then continue to my destination So this customer requires us to slide tandems. Let's see how we do that. Sliding tandems is really easy. All you have to do is pull out this bar right here. I'm gonna pull it out like this. And if you look at it, it has a groove right here. What I want is this groove to come and settle in here. So, like that. If you notice, that goes inside and that's going to help me move these tires to the back now there are some some trailers instead of having a bar they have um it's also kind of like a bar but what you do with it there's a groove here you have to pull it out and put it down or sometimes you pull it up pull it out and put it up and then you slide that and then the whole point is to get this inside some of the newer trailers i've, I've worked with very new trailers when i was back in california and they had a button here, a very small button. All you had to do was just to press that button and move. That's the easiest I've seen. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to slide these tandems here and they're going to go all the way to the back. The way to do that is I'm going to uh, engage the brakes for the trailer, which means they, these tires are not going to move. What is going to move is this trailer right here. The container is going to slide in front, which means that that part is going to come and sit right here. For us to make sure that the uh, the tires are not moving, all we have to make sure is the red one, which is the trailer brake, is pulled all the way out. We are going to push in the yellow one, which is the tractor brake, and then we are going to move forward. So we push that in. So right now the brakes for the tractor are released. We are going to put it in drive because we want to go forward and then we are going to move forward what that is going to do is it's going to move the the tractor and the, the tires are going to stay stuck now sometimes if it's not moving you just give it a little bit of a shake you put it in reverse a little bit put it in reverse and then put it back in front in, in forward moving and then pull it there we go we are moving there we go it's now all the way to the back and then we have to release the brakes now because the tires in the back now I'm gonna put it in reverse and back it all the way to the dock you see how they are all the way to the back one of the things I like about this customer you don't even have to open the doors. They are gonna open the doors from the inside. When they are done unloading, they will close the doors. So I'm done here with unloading. I'm just gonna go across the street right there. I'm literally just gonna cross the road, go right there, that's JB Hunt, pick up my next load and head to Dallas. So when it comes to hooking to a trailer, we have three, 
three let me call them cables or lines that come from the truck and as you can see they are connected to the truck we are going to connect them to the trailer two of them kind of look the same as you can see one is blue one is supposed to be red mine right here doesn't have any color it's all gone but one is supposed to be blue one is supposed to be red and then the third one which is usually a green color is supposed to be an electrical color i mean an electrical cord as you can see these two look the same and this look different looks different so these two are called air lines this is the electrical cord and these are going to go in here of course you can tell that these are going to go here and here and this is gonna go in the middle here this is kind of different from this so there's no way you can miss that so let's put that in here and what that does it connects our uh, our lights so i have made another uh, video here concerning lights on on the trailer uh, i've said if sometimes you you put in that and the lights are not coming in all you have to do is wiggle it a little bit you guys have seen some of my videos where i will put a seal in here uh, the whole reason behind that is to make sure that the lights work because sometimes um, this cord right here it will kind of become loose and so it won't make contact with the pins in there and the lights may kind of flicker you can you can watch the video where i talked about that and get more details on that in case you want that but here we just want to go through the basics so you connect this in here and then this blue one is gonna go on the other side this will all uh right now mine are not colored but usually this should be colored blue so which means the blue one is going to be the farthest away from you so you put that in there and the way to put it in there you just bring that by the way i need to change my seal you see my rubber seal that needs to be changed i will change it but right now i'm in a hurry but this you put it on here and then you twist like that and then you put the red one the red one is going to be the closest to you so you put this again you get it here you'll see it has a kind of a groove and there is a groove there so what you want to do is to put this on here so that this hole is going to align with that hole because that's where the air is going to go to go to your trailer brakes but this is going to go on here like this and then you align it and you push it in there so that this can go to hold like that that's it now if you ever make a mistake and put this red one on the other side and this one this side in other words if you ever change them what is going to happen when you go back in the truck to try and move the trailer will not move so you'll be there trying to move the tractor trailer and you are wondering why your truck is not moving the reason why it won't be moving is because you have interchanged this so anytime that happens just come back and make sure you have them right the blue one will be the farthest away from you it should be color coded but in case it's not color coded always remember the blue one is the farthest away from you the red one is usually the closest to you and there you have your trailer hooked up this is what they call the landing gear all you have to do is to get this out and then this landing gear this is what you're gonna use to pull to get that leg off the ground and take it up there are two two speeds to this right now it's pulled out which means if i try to move it it's gonna go really slow but if i push it in like that now it's gonna go on a normal space uh, on normal speed so when it's pushed in all the way it will be on a normal speed when i pull it out like that it's gonna be it's it's easy to crank but it's gonna be very slow now when is that useful if you have a load that is really heavy and for some reason somebody put this landing gear really high you may have to pull this out so that as you um for as you bring this leg up it will help you kind of uh, soften you know like the turning around uh, and then when you get when it's kind of lowered a little bit you'll then push it in 
to get it to a normal speed now sometimes you'll find some trailers where where that is interchanged when you pull out it's at normal speed when you push in it's a sl uh, at a slow speed but the whole idea you need to remember about the speeds anytime you have a trailer that is heavy and you are having problems uh, bringing this thing uh, up change the speed pull it out so that is easier on you a little bit and then when it goes down a little bit then you can push it in and go on the normal speed and when you are done when it's all the way up just pull it out and bring and settle it down there so i had i had to spend a few minutes there to call claims cargo claims because the seal on this load was broken anytime you have a broken seal before you move you are supposed to call and report it so they can put it in the system that way you cover yourself i don't know if this load was attempted like they, they attempted to deliver it and they broke the seal but they didn't put a new seal and so the paperwork shows still shows the old seal but the seal was broken i don't know if sometimes drivers will break trailers like on the yard when they are looking for empties they will think maybe uh, a trailer is empty and they will break the seal so i had to report it i'm done with that i'm supposed to be there uh, at seven so i believe i will make it right now it's 6 15. i should be good I'm running out of time, every day goes by so fast And every moment counts, baby, I don't wanna miss a thing